I fell in love with Hank because he could build things. And I couldn't change a light bulb, to tell you the truth. And I think it's been <laughs> thinking about light bulbs and changing light bulbs, which is what we've been doing for 25 years now. And Julie has no hesitation in criticizing or commenting on or improving upon what you build. And that's the great thing about Julie, is even though she doesn't know how to build it, she certainly knows what's worth building. I like to tinker and build things. I come from a background of, of my father was a bricklayer carpenter, and uh, my brother is an industrial concreter. So I was involved in construction at the age of I don't know, six, uh, going out to construction sites. I think I knew I wanted to be an architect at the age of three. I, I landed in the in architecture by accident because I didn't see myself writing essays full time, and I didn't see myself. Um, having the sort of graphic strength to be able to say I could be an artist, which was something that really interested me. And I went over to the architecture school and there was a guy with a club foot, who, uh, this guy Mr. Caldercat, and I said, well, I'm thinking about doing architecture. And he said, well, you don't have to be an architect, it's a great education. And what I found about that is it's true, because it doesn't stop at school, it just opens up a whole range of questions. There's, a, there's an implicit trust between architects and the community at large that your job, whether they ask for it or not, is to give them more than they expect and the best that you can do with the compositional tools and experiential tools that you have. Over the course of, of my career, and particularly in getting involved with public schools in the last decade, um, I've noticed that while we in our society build beautiful office buildings for our corporations and hospitals and so on, um, we tend to put our children in really extraordinarily ugly buildings. And uh, it's, it's always struck me as, as uh, something that's rather disrespectful to children. So that when we at, at um, New Road School and New Visions Foundation decided to build something that we are call, calling the Herb Alpert Educational Village. What we wanted to do was to create a space that is both functional, um, that works for all of our educational purposes, but in addition to that is, is aesthetically beautiful and consequently respectful of young people. We uh, interviewed several architectural firms um, looking for that firm that could combine both the knowledge of, of how things work with the city, um, how you solve all the practical problems of, in our case, of putting a whole lot of functions in a relatively small space and at the same time creating something beautiful. And at the end of the day, um, it seemed like Koning Eisenberg was just the ticket for what we were looking for. We've always, uh, you know, stressed design in our various hotels, and um, it's always a matter of creating a sense of place. Every hotel is unique, and we work with many different styles. Um, one of the reasons uh, Hank and Julie were interesting is when we're looking for an architect for the Standard in downtown, it was going to be one of, at that time, one of the bigger projects for us. It involved more architecture than we had been used to doing before. And uh, we were really looking for someone who uh, could both embrace and expand upon sort of a, a then emerging style which we were using to characterize the standard. It was a, a terrific collaboration and uh, one in which uh, I think Connie Geisenberg added a lot in terms of their uh, uh, sort of bold and significant moves uh, that, that gave uh, an otherwise stayed uh, office building, uh, the kind of character that we were looking for in a standard hotel. Hi gang, I'm John Chase, urban designer for the city of West Hollywood, comfortably seated in what I like to consider West Hollywood's living room which is the senior lounge at the community center that Koenig Eisenberg designed for us. The architecture is open, welcoming, provides a kind of friendly atmosphere that's very accessible to people, a connection to the out of doors, 
and actually a coziness that a lot of modern architecture just can't muster. In a way, it's just as though it was an extension of their own home.